Hi everybody, welcome to my new channel. I'm the Linux Guy, and let's get started. Today I'm going to start a series of videos on how to use Linux for various daily activities, whether it comes to gaming, 3D printing, all sorts of things you can use it for. Uh, I used to run a channel called Processors and Things on YouTube. Now I'm migrating to an independent channel on LBRY. I'm also going to host one on BitChute, and I think YouTube as well. YouTube videos are going to be posted a day late though, so follow me on LBRY or BitChute. Check out these new alternative platforms. In today's episode I'm going to talk about FreeCAD, and basically what sparked me to think about talking about this was I've been getting into 3D printing recently, and a lot of people online say that 3D printing and Linux just don't mesh real well, and I kind of reject that notion, so basically I'm here on my Pop! OS desktop. I'm running Pop! OS 20.04. I'm going to dive into operating systems more in other videos, but right now I'm just going to talk about how to get some stuff done. I think that's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to open up FreeCAD and I'm going to show you some stuff you can do, some tips and tricks to help you get started with it. And then you can use FreeCAD for STL modeling, for 3D printing. So basically here's some models that I have, but I'm going to open FreeCAD. Now if you don't have FreeCAD, there is a flat pack available. That's what I have installed on my Pop! OS install. There are some older builds available, I think, in the Debian repositories, but I want the latest build, so I went ahead and got the newest build of FreeCAD, which is 0.18. At the time of recording this, there may be more coming out later, but FreeCAD is actually a really excellent tool. It's a professional tool, and you can do all sorts of stuff with FreeCAD. I'm going to go ahead and close the start page, and I'm going to go ahead and open the part workbench in FreeCAD, because this is where we're going to do most of our work. We might use the draft workbench as well for one little thing, but we're mostly going to do stuff in the part workbench. So I'm going to make a new project, and then I'm going to go ahead and import something from that folder that you saw earlier. So right here I've got a guitar backplate, and I designed this a while ago in FreeCAD, and basically I needed a custom-made backplate for one of my guitars, I play guitar, and here it is. I made this entirely in FreeCAD, and effectively I'm going to show you how that's done. So I'm going to go ahead and start fresh, and I'm going to give myself a cube, and let's give it some dimensions. So over here you can change the color. Notably you can change transparency and color. There's other things you can change here. They're probably not super relevant. Color is helpful though when you have multiple objects, and transparency is nice if you need to see things inside of another object. But right now we just need this one, and I'm going to arbitrarily pick some length and heights. So let's say I wanted it to be 4 inches by 4 inches by a quarter inch high and I can easily create that shape here and I can scroll out and there it is. So let's say we wanted to make some kind of design in this thing. Well, we could pull an STL file in and I think I'm going to do just that. So what I want to do with this Linux Penguin, well first of all I'd like to see it better so I'm going to go to the transform tool which will let me look at it a little bit more clearly and move it around. So there it is and we'll click OK and the next thing I need to do is I need to convert this guy. So right now this is a mesh, but you see that this is a part, the cube that I made is a part. Also it's kind of big, so I'd like to make it a little bit smaller. So how do we do that in FreeCAD? Well we've imported the STL, that's the first step. But the next thing we do is make sure we're on the part workbench, which we are, and we need to create a shape from the mesh. The tolerance doesn't matter usually, so I usually do the default and click OK. Now you see our Linux Penguin looks a little bit different here. And we have two of him. So I'm going to go ahead and press the space bar to block out the one that I don't need anymore. And now I have, we have a part we need to convert it to a proper solid. So we'll do that by clicking convert to solid. Now we've got our solid there. And again, I'll put space bar on this other one to hide it. Now he's got all these lines from the import process. So, so there's a way to fix that. And it's called this ref refined shape. So let's do that as well. There we go. Now Tux is looking a whole lot better, more like something we can use here. So there's one last thing we want to do. We want to change his size. And the way we do that is we actually have to make a clone of him. And for this, we do actually need that draft workbench. Now, I'm not going to explain every tool in here because I'm trusting that if you're interested in this, you have at least some idea of what you're doing already. I'm just trying to give you a crash course so that you can get started. Right here, we've got our revision, and we need to make a clone of it. So in FreeCAD, there's this little sheep guy in the draft workbench. You can also find him up here, but I find it easier to just go find him on the actual toolbar. But there he is in here. But I'm going to click this one. They do the same thing. 
All right, we've got a clone, and now you see the clone actually has options that the original didn't have. I'm going to click this drop down, and let's scale him to half his original size. So we scaled him to 0.5. You see he's changing size, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Now, this is a little glitch I found in FreeCAD that happens sometimes. I'll go ahead and make that change there. You see how it actually only changed one of the dimensions? Uh, you can get around this little glitch by just cloning him again. And now we actually have two, but we don't need the new one. We need the old one. So let's transform him, move him up, move him over. And he's not exactly the right size. We could go ahead and make him a little bit smaller. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and make him a quarter the original size. And now you'll see that the change is actually working, as opposed to before where, um, not so much. For some reason this little bug, once it's, once you've worked it out, is fine. So let's transform him again, and let's put him back in the middle. And now we want to just tuck him into it. So let's look from the front using this right here, which we can bring him down. And now he's in there. We can center him a little bit better. And we'll go back here to change our view. And where'd he go? Well, he's kind of tucked underneath. Maybe we should bring him back up a little bit. So we'll transform him again, bring him back up, and there he is. Okay, well we could leave it right just like this, and we could combine him to the cube back in our part work bench. You do that with this tool right here, make a union of several shapes. So I'll click it, and then I'm going to undo my change actually after it's done. I just want to show you that it will make this into one object, and we could export this as an STL right now. There's also another option. What if I wanted to dig him out, like a saw almost? We can do that too. It's this tool right here. And there we go. Now we have like a tux dug out of our, our soon-to-be guitar backplate thingy. So we can do this with a lot of stuff, um, but I'm not going to go too deep into it right now because I want to move on. But basically, this is all you need to know about how FreeCAD works. So what if we want rounded edges or chamfered edges? We can do that too. Control click to get all the sides you want. You see how they're all green there? Now that I've got them all, I can do rounded edge or chamfer. I'll do chamfer. And then this is as simple as just putting the dimension in that you want and making sure that it's not the full dimension. So if I did, uh, remember we did this at 0.25. If I do 0.25 here, it actually won't work. But if I do 0.24, it will. Now, the reason for this is if you do 0.25, basically the math cancels out. But if you do 0.24, there it is. And now we've got chamfered edges. Maybe I didn't want them that big, but the idea is just to show you how to use this tool for this purpose. Finally, we're going to go ahead and add a cylinder, which I'm going to transform. Now, again, you can, you can actually move this by spe specified increment, which you can do in this data. So if I want to make it pre very precise, I can do it by a measured increment. I'm not going to bother do that right now just because I want to show you the functionality and get through this video, but I'm going to duplicate this a few times. You can do that in Edit and Duplicate Selection, and it's what you have selected over here on this bar. So now I'm going to transform this, slide it over, transform this and slide it over, and transform this and slide it over. Now, remember how we use the tool to make our indentation there? So we can do that again with all of these selected here in our chamfer, but we have to do, we have to do one at a time. So let's go ahead and do one. And do another one. And do another one. And then the last one. And that's it, basically. We now have a three-dimensional object. It's got holes in it. And we got this cool-looking little Linux backplate for a guitar. Now, again, I didn't worry so much about dimensions, but you can take dimensions in the real world and make this. Okay, now what do I do with it? 
this is a FreeCAD file, right? I, I can't use FreeCAD with a slicer. Well, that's true, but you can go ahead and highlight what you want. By the way, you can highlight multiple items. So if I highlighted all these, I can export all of them together as one object, which is pretty cool. But I have all this stuff combined into one object that I want to export, so I'll go ahead and export that. Put it here in my models and call it Penguin Backplate. So there we go, I've just made something in Linux with totally free software. Something people said couldn't really be done. And I'm going to close and I'm so confident I'm just not going to even save it. Instead I'm going to open Cura, you can use whatever slicer you want. I'll talk about Cura in another video, but I'm just going to pull this STL into Cura just to show you that it does actually recognize it so I can slice and print my file if I want to. So, so here's my Penguin backplate. You can see it loaded into Cura. I can slice it and I can print it. So 3D printing, totally a thing you can do right here in Linux. And it's not just that you need to download everything off of Thingiverse. You can do design yourself, and it's really not too hard to do. These are all the basics, and once you've mastered these little functions, you'll be able to do pretty much anything with FreeCAD, which means you can make pretty much anything with your 3D printer. Yeah, that's really all I want to cover today. You know, I could save this to a removable file now, and I've got my G-code. I'm ready to print. I take that over to my printer, and I go. There's also some cool Linux projects, like Octopi. You should look into that for the Raspberry Pi. It is a basically an Apache server, from what I understand, that allows you to set up remote prints with G-code files uploaded to this Raspberry Pi server. And then it can also monitor them. It can even keep a live stream of the video of what's going on to make sure your prints are running properly without you being physically present. Just a project to be in mind. I probably won't cover Octopi on here because I only have one printer and I don't see the point for just one printer. But for those of you who are interested in 3D printing in Linux, it's something to look into. And I think that's about it for this video. This channel is going to explore all sorts of stuff. So like you see down here, right, you have all sorts of things. I'll talk about using Kden Live for video editing. I'll talk about using how to use the terminal. This is something that's just not talked about a whole lot, and I think that some basic terminal explanations would be good. I'll walk through video games. Sometimes maybe I'll have some lectures here about what I think about the state of gaming for Linux, and just sort of anything and everything that strikes my fancy. But it'll all sort of have this foundational Linux point of view to it, so if you're interested in doing getting things done in Linux, this is probably the channel for you. And with that, I'll say that that's it for the video. Please be sure to follow us on Library, subscribe on BitChute, or YouTube if you're seeing this on YouTube. But I'm trying to pull my audience to LBRY or BitChute, so YouTube's not going to get their videos till a day late. So make sure to check out LBRY or Library and BitChute to see me on these alternative platforms. Thanks everybody for watching, and I'll see you next time.